BMW IBSF Bob Schnell Skeleton World Championships 2023 in Samaritz in Switzerland and Saturday afternoon means it is the time for the two-man competition after an exciting entertaining and occasionally damaging first heat we are heading into heat two with 28 of our 30 starters remaining in the competition Martin Haven and Greg Hackett breathlessly ready to watch the action with Francesco Friedrich a seven-time consecutive world champion trying to defend his title lying in third spot yeah so we will expecting to see some big things out of uh, Francesco at the start because he's been nursing that injury for the past few weeks and we've seen him jogging in the start so he was on it a bit more today but we're seeing some of these big boys catching up now to the start here Gail Kreischauer and Lochner taking number one in the start but again a bit of a bit of a slippy run from from Hansi he'll, he'll want to sort that out for the next one he's sitting in second which obviously leads us on to you know at the moment the delivery boys Mickey Vogt and Sandro Michel, these guys, they're so much fun to compete with. Mickey is super talented and, you know, great fun to be around. And they just, they enjoy this sport and they happen to bring exceptional talent to it as well. So it's been really good to see. But, you know, when you've got the weight of uh, expectation on your shoulders at the home games, you know, it's uh, not a bad place to be still number one. Mickey Vogt with lots of potential, having a very strong season and leading after the 30, but not by much. 700s with Friedrich, 1600s back. If Friedrich is half a second back, he's still a threat. Yeah. Hall, Hafer and Heinrich, all the others in the top <laughs> six ahead of Baumgartner. What a run from him. And Sipuli, some of our young sliders still really producing the goods here. Well, 30 sleds started, two crashed out, so I'm afraid there will be no more action from Adam Amur, the junior world champion, or Tratzen Silic. So one German sled and Croatia are out of it. But there's that man, Hansi Lochner. He will fancy his chances, definitely. There are things to tidy up. Friedrich has quite a lot to tidy up as well. And Mickey Vogt, yeah. I'm sure, will want to fine up his act. We've had one of four heats and your teammate there, Brad Hall, who drives yeah. for Great Britain. Same deal, you know, everybody's made little mistakes and they will continue to make little mistakes. It's minimizing, keeping those as small as possible that's going to be the difference between being in the medals and not. Yeah, and, and this track, you, you have to keep those lines as straight as possible. You know, if you're skidding off corners, you're scrubbing time, you know, if you're not taking your speed to those crucial bottom four right-handers, and those two left-handers, you know, you're you're just killing your chances. And when it's so close, you know, how many how many uh, sleds have we got for a dead heat here? All I know. Split we by 100. About, we got about six ties. You know, it's great racing all the way through. It's really good to see. Now we turn our field around for the fastest 25 down to the leaders, and then the remaining three sleds will follow them. So we'll go 25 down to one, and then 26, 27, 28, and that will round out our first day's action. Now all four heats count. You can't throw any away, there are no lets, so yeah. every single second, fraction of a second you spend on the track is vital. Yeah, and every hundredth at this start point as well, because you know, these guys have to keep that, keep that speed all the way down. Second heat of the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh world championships in Samaritz. Axel Brown and Shaquille John get us underway for Trinidad and Tobago. Martin Haven and Greg Cackett watching the action. Now, these guys started 5.30 in the first heat. Maybe a little nerves. Let's see if they can go quicker as he drives it. Oh, just off the wall, 5.39. Yeah, a little harder out that first kick than he'd won. But Axel didn't have too bad a run here. He's being taught by Lee Johnston, who absolutely knows his way around this track. Keep it nice danger areas. In those first couple of corners, little high off the third pressure in wall into snake one and snake two. Yeah, so he'd be disappointed to drop their start back there. But again, we're seeing a, a, a young nation here in sliding sports. Axel doing a great thing for, you know, reigniting this federation and giving a chance. You know, already one of his brakemen um, has done the Lake Placid Bob School recently, so they're already getting in the front seat. They're already wanting to give this crazy sport a try. Nice exit out of Horseshoe, trying to build his speed down the track. We're not getting the speeds. Their telemetry device doesn't seem to be working, but the timing on the track is their first heat, a 1 minute 7.14. Much better at the bottom here from Axel. Oh, that's way better. 107.32. Now, that. the line looked good, but that slower start and the hit on the wall took a bit of speed out of them. The track should get quicker still this afternoon. 
It is only, what, 2.30, there's another couple of hours of daylight, and uh, as the air warms up, the ice surface warms up a fraction as well. Yeah, and he had, uh, you know, a bit of a rough first heat and at the bottom there, you know, Adapotago just saved a big, um, big exit, but that was much cleaner, a much cleaner run from Axel, so... Steering much earlier than most, you can see the lines that he left there, the shiny marks the runners leave on the still frosty track there at the start. Yeah, and there's that hit out of Shamrock, but look. There is Axel Brown. Cool, better run, Axel, good One job. One day done. Next up, Italy's Mattia Variola with debutant brakeman Jose Abu. Variola's been a world championship brakeman for his coach, Simone Batazzo, and also for Jürgen Loaca. Now, I thought in the first heat that uh, the timing of their hit was just slightly out here. Now, we'll see if I'm right or wrong, because they pushed a 5.15, and I'd expect a bit quicker out of these two. They've been top three on the World Cup this year. And uh, Delmas is a 10.200 meter runner, a repeat Italian champion. And it's a little better, a little better. Let's see if this yields something quicker. In, down, that's much better low. 517, no, okay. Well, maybe it's that start getting frosty. Maybe the start Could is frosting up a little. Better speed than we saw from the Trinidad and Tobago sled, but then they covered the ice faster by two tenths of a second, so they should have better speed. And, and Mattia had so much to clean. Hey, there's a skid. Into snake one and two, clean down to Sunny. So keep your nose clean now, Mattia, through Nash and Dixon, and a good line out of Horseshoe. You should see some speed coming up. So, you know, oh, nice and high. So, height. Was that a little tap that pushed away a bit there, but he's going for it here. Better speed than we saw from Axel Brown of Trinidad and Tobago. Mattia had a tough first heat. He will not want to be out of heat four. He wants to be in the top 20. He's not alone in that, of course, and he's starting from 24th place. Yeah, and it's... I would... Oof, okay, nearly came off the target there. So, again, I'm going to be interested to see how the start stacks up here, because I, I've got, I rate these guys so highly in the push. Um, so to drop two hundreds, I mean, there could be any number of reasons for that. Again, Matteo is, and, you know, still a relatively new driver. He's still developing, still learning. You know, sometimes that can take a little heat out of your start. So he comes out into a skid here. Yeah, sixteen hundreds quicker than their first heat, but still lots of work to do. And there's the skid, and you just can't give that away on this track. Big height in horseshoe, right up to the woodwork. Now, that inch perfect, you might. <laughs> in other years, that would be a great line. This year, the way the track is cut in horseshoe, not quite so effective. But he got it down and didn't park it. Jeff Gabois for the USA with rookie brakeman Martin Christofferson. So part of the World Push Championship winning team, but uh, Martin is, is the individual USA push champ. So he's... Uh, Rightly been put on the back of Jeff's two man here to give him as much of a rocket at the start as he can. They had a 524 getaway. In the first say, come on. 27th in the World Championships in Whistler, his previous two man race, Jeff Garbois, but he took a bronze medal in the team competition when that was for Bobsleigh and Skeleton. 24 to beat, so 27 they've dropped back to. Again, so we might be seeing that frost, that sticky start, just impairing the speed there. But this is better from Jeff. Navigating the two first kinks down into wall. There's the first pressure, the second pressure, and the third pressure in wall. Okay. Down into snake one. A longer run down into snake than there has been in years gone by. Out of Sunny. Which the wall into Nash and Dixon. Our horseshoe. Again, he's keeping this pretty clean, so we're seeing number one on the speed. Well, there's the first tap we've heard in the forest. Another little nudge there. Start coming into green numbers. If he keeps us clean, he'll go ahead. We had a 200s advantage over Mattia Variola from the first heat. 140.5, 87.3 miles an hour. That's quicker than we've seen from the Italian. 106.66, that's a three-tenths improvement nearly on what Variola managed. So he is accelerating away from the Italian. Yeah, and he has significantly higher top speed in there as well. And that's helped him get down and take three-tenths out of Mattia. Tuffy Latour helping with his legs down at the bottom. The uh, head of their skeleton team. So you see him taking that slightly lower line. Round horseshoe. 
Comes out nice, he doesn't take the tap before telephone. He's out of Shamrock. Drive him into the wall, but again, manages it well. Like you say, not too much of a skid into Devil's Dyke. Yeah. Okay. Take right, that Jeff. square hit rather than a skid any day. Where's the camera? <laughs> There's the camera. He, is that big, ugly Dutch guy? Next up is Alexei Boron of Poland and Severin Sozna, his brakeman. Two young athletes boasting their first ever World Championship start. 22-year-old driver Alexei, 19-year-old uh, Severin Sosna, his brakeman. Oh. As we Get a load of the high five. The first heat, getting the Polish bobsled team back yes, on the world map. There we go, and they're making their mark even before they set off. Watchful eye in the background there, Lyndon Rush of Canada. It's so about 5.27 to beat from their first heat. 5.31, so again, another one. We're seeing another drop. Now, that could be an experience, that could be the start profile, but yep. we're going to want to see. Uh, a solid run from Alexi here. Well, nice, quiet hands on these first two straights. It is a downhill sport, and they do actually go downhill. It just doesn't feel like it. Yeah. And again, Wall's a tricky corner, but managing those first three pressures without much speed. So I mean, when you're at this stage of your career as well, Martin, you know, they're just going to be looking at, you know, minimizing the mistakes they make in the previous heats, right? That's That's got to be the win. Just learning from every run and has never raced on this track before. So now in his eighth trip down this track. You know, he's doing the tap out of Shamrock there, which might dent the speed a bit, but he's number one speed at the moment. Yeah. There we go, just come back to two now. Second to Jeff Garbois, so he's going to drop behind Garbois at the moment. And actually, he's going to drop behind Matia Variola, who tidied up his act from the first heat as well. Alexei having just a slightly looser run, better speed at the Smell bottom than speed. anybody so far. So does he go second? He does. Oh, tied with Matia Variola. So Jeff Enough Garbois there. Yeah, well, here we go. You know, we've had four Ridiculous. sleds down and, and two are tied already. Yeah, those brakes on. Yeah, and I think definitely, you know, as we were saying, I think did minimise mistakes there. Yep. You know, learning with every run. That's about the right height this year, I think, in Horseshoe. Not too high, so you're really inverted. An excellent aero. You know, I think he is a slightly smaller figure, the brakeman, but he is absolutely buried. I mean, you're buried whether you like it or not around the Horseshoe. Yeah. G force and all that. Good job, though. Yeah. Well, we saw Lyndon Rush and the next sled. There he is, overseeing it with Justin Cripps on the left. This is for Canada. Taylor Austin, Shaquille murray lons outpushed a fraction by their teammates. Yeah. And they were outpaced down the track as well by Pat Morton and Cyrus Gray. So they want to revert that. So the race within a race is, so they maintain their start. Again, that's, that might stack up well for these guys. So 31 again. Now, Taylor will absolutely Ooh. want to outdrive Pat here because he knows the start. Yep. Lean away from the wall there. Manages to keep it clean into wall. Too bad. A little tap, but it's not too bad through there. Now snake one and two as he goes around. Sunny. Nice exit. So this is keeping this nice and clean, nice and quiet. Yeah, very nice looking run so far from Taylor Austin. Oh, and he's over. Oh, Taylor. And that's what he did in training. Uh, it's a long way down for the guys. Yeah. Gosh, the ice, you wear these Kevlar Burns vests because you, you don't want to have your skin in the ice without one. Yeah. You can get some nasty burns, so hopefully the boys keep themselves in. The track controllers here are, are excellent. They'll come up and catch them. Watch them already timing it. and hopefully we'll see them get out nice and quick. I don't think they're going to quite make the line. No, they won't, no. unfortunately. They were carrying a bit more speed than a couple we've seen, but they oh, do not cross the finish, finish line. Guys. Actually, even if they had with that long run down the ice, I'd kind of be surprised if they were both ready to go again. Yeah. Getting in horse pretty medium low line. Yeah, he climbs, low. but not much. Look at the runner tips. Steering, steering. Yeah. And does he then release the steer? Well, he doesn't really have time. He does release the steer, but too early. He didn't want to haul it down and slam hard into telephone on his left. And as we've seen from our previous two sliders who've crashed here, didn't do quite enough to bring it down. And it, no, you know, it's such a fine up. judgment. We're talking hundreds of a second. 
in making that steer or not. And he didn't neglect to make it. He just knew he had the line. And yeah. as it turns out, he didn't. Oh, yeah. Well, hopefully they'll be out fit, healthy and OK, and they will regroup for the four-man. Um, yeah. Because, you know, Canada, in, again, in a rebuilding phase, just like many other nations here with the retirements of Crips. Uh, Springer, shout out, Chris, if you're watching. You know, he's potentially coming back next year. Yeah, is he? No, isn't he's he? determined he to come back next year. Okay, he's just determined so. not to injure himself between now and then. So, yeah, I'll yeah, we'll be looking for Justin uh, for... Uh, for the Springer to come back. Justin Cripps is here, of course, coaching. He was a silver medalist last time out here in San Moritz. He was a bronze medalist the year before and the two-man Olympic champion in 2018. Adrian Adams and uh, the rest of the US crew. Manteo Mitchell there yeah. famously broke his leg in the 400-meter relay, London 2012 Olympics. Man, how do you do that? I, I have no idea. I do, I'm not oh, even sure he I, does. I, I, do, I, no, I don't want to see video. I really <laughs> don't want to see. I, I, I mean, even as I asked the question, head. I know I don't want to know how you break your leg in the relay. That's... I don't know how he broke it and kept going. And has a medal to show. Okay, I, no, I really don't want to know now. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, a bit of Jaeger tea there, well. going down on that hot, hot apple punch. They don't do Gluvine here in Samaris, but a hot apple punch, though. Apparently, you can get non-alcoholic. I'm not quite sure why you would, but apparently you can. <laughs> Maybe for athletes. Well, yeah, so I they mean, probably sell about two a year. Well, we had a hot apple yesterday in the in the Horseshoe Bar, my first time in there, and mm -hmm. it was purchased by the head coach. You'd like to think it was alcohol-free, but I promise nothing. There's the boys getting yeah. tied up now. Oh. I, I, you know, particularly for the driver. I mean, all the drivers that you talk to, they feel so responsible because they are responsible. They yeah. know they've got the crew's life in their hands, literally as well as metaphorically. It's not just about the speed. The moment that something goes squirrely like that, you know that they're in your hands. And, and uh, yeah, they, I mean, he will feel as bad for crashing Shaq as he does for being out of the race. Well, there's that new grandstand above the start area. They've extended the little start balcony as well, so you can walk all the way down beside the track. It's, it's such a great place to come yeah. to watch. It really is. And inside that bar there, the Gunter Tax Lodge, so much memorabilia, old photos, yeah. bits of old mangled bobsled runners, great. caricatures and stuff, dating right back to the 30s and before. And they've been sliding here since the 1890s, so... Yeah. This place has got plenty of history and plenty of famous faces dotted around as well. Young and old, from the sport and from outside. And the espresso only costs 40 euros. So yeah, I mean, know, that's an absolute, absolute bargain, bargain in San Moritz terms. Yeah. Well, no, waiting his story. turn, Frankie Del Duca with Hakeem Abdul Sabour. They're waiting just in that little room beside the start area that the officials use. Honorary members only and athletes waiting for their turn. So you can see the, the boys from the Czech Republic who will be next up as well as Taylor Austin and Shaquille Murray-Lawrence arrive in the finish area, not under their own steam. And that is the end of the worlds for them, I'm afraid, in the two-man. Hopefully they will be fit and well to go in the four-man. It's Daytona 24-hour weekend this weekend. Samaritza Daytona, I mean, that is actually a really tough call. It will be colder here. It will probably also be sunnier here. It may not be noisier here, though. So uh, an awful lot going on this weekend. World Championships of Luge in Oberhof. If you're so predisposed. Obviously, the bobsleigh skeleton will be an awful lot more entertaining. Track workers just Obviously. making sure that there are no holes in the ice that are going to lead other sleds astray, particularly down in the quick corners because you want to be steering the sled and not the other way around. Yeah, and they seem to repair this track pretty quick. You know, I don't think it behaves the same as the refrigerated concrete. You know, it doesn't fall apart quite so easily. No. Um, the track holds seem to be a lot quicker. You seem to be on the way a lot quicker. Yeah, well. most of the hold is actually to get the sled all the way up to the finish on the yeah. winch rather than to uh, to fix drama. So, well, the boys had a 5.16 getaway in the in the first heat, mm -hmm. which has been a pretty good return for, you know, Frank's still coming back from an ankle problem. So yeah. I think pretty satisfied with that. I think he's in a pretty good place as well. Former brakeman, raced in 2016 with Stephen Holcomb in... Eagles and in 2017 with Nick Cunningham and went to the games twice with Cunningham and then uh, Hakeem Abdul Sabour went to the games twice with Brakeman uh, Cunningham in 2018 and then with Frankie 
in February. I keep saying this year, of course, last, last year, year. <laughs> and this is 2023. Yeah, it seems so much Big more recent. The size of the bloke, he's a fitness model, bodybuilder, he's enormous. Can't imagine why. I mean, just look at him, he's a god. 519. Okay, again, drops a little. Stacks up as the second fastest push so far, but they do have number one speed, so they've managed to retain some velocity. The big man got in pretty effectively. Creep away from the wall, Frankie. Don't steer, just breathe it over. Just think it over. Double tap down there into Snake. The Americans facing off against each other here. He's got three tenths in the bank against his compatriot, and he's keeping this nice and tidy. Oh, I didn't check. I don't know if he's ever been on the back of a Jeff Garbois sled as a brakeman. Something I ought to look up. Yeah, because he was a, great, he was a fantastic brakeman, Frank. Mm. Second best speed. He manages Shamrock well. Only a little tap before Devil's Dyke. Gap over Gabwa is coming down, no, but good speed. good speed in the forest. As he bursts out into the sunlight out of the Gunter Sachs curve. What's he got on board? Good speed. Two. As quick as Gabwa, in fact, quicker. Oh, and yeah. across the line, he leads by 14 hundreds of a second. So there's Jeff on the right, Martin Christofferson on the left. They leave the leader's box. And Frank Del Duca and Hakeem Abdul Sabor will move in. That's it. And like we said, you know, in the first heat, if you're not number one, you better be number one in your nation. Get yourself in the, literally in the driving seat to take your nation forward as you develop over the next few years. And Frankie absolutely will there develop. from Frankie, I think, uh, feels he probably got away with that at the yeah, run off the wall in the first corner. Yeah. That's his first time here. Mm. You know, he's enjoying it. I think for a lot of these guys and girls as well, it's their first time in Moritz. And, you know, you're all told the stories about Moritz. It's historic Moritz. It's beautiful Moritz. I think when you come here and drive, well, I mean, when you come here as a brake, you learn very quickly. It's a different experience. I think if you're driving, it's, it's, it's the only place I'm jealous of the bikes. I, I love seeing new athletes coming here because nothing you say when you're in Altenburg can prepare you for what Samaritz is like. You just can't. Now, another of our rookies is the Czech Republic's Matty Bohunek with Dominic Zaleski behind him. Zaleski, the more experienced of the two in terms of race starts, but neither have started in a world championships before. Yep, so Zaleski, as we always rightly point out, 10.100 meter runner, and an excellent competitor. He just gets that handling in time. Not ideal around King One, but he's, he's straightened it out now. Now two, rides it a little high, but he's keeping it under control. So another young lad, another young uh, potential talent for the Czechs. You know what we've got? You know Dominic is uh, at home. You know recovering from a uh, quite a serious knee problem. So shout out to you, Dom. Hope you're recovering well, mate. So, 100th. This is going to be here. tight, isn't it? Yeah. Very yeah. tight yeah. indeed. What did he have in, in hand? He had 800s over Frank Del Duca from the first heat. Tap for little, telephone. A little oh, moment, me. moment there. Oh, goodness me. Yeah, he goes, Lesky. You weren't awake, you are now. Okay, round nameless. Keep these clean, it's gonna, I mean, that's gonna scrub the lot of speed here. Yeah, these sleds are not easy to pick up when they're empty, eight. never mind with two people on board. Yes, it's a bit, bit hectic at the bottom here. He will drop. Fifth best speed out of six sleds, one of which was upside down. So he's going to drop behind Del Duca and down to fifth place of our six sleds so far. Well, that's a shame, but again, a young athlete in his first major race. He's not even started a World Cup race yet, so... Mati Behunek for the Czech Republic. <laughs> I don't think he was really Dangerous expecting to be here. No, and it's it's again, like you said, but with some of the others, it's just experience. Wow, that was a that was a <laughs> And that's just from hitting the side oh. of the track. So I mean, I, I'm yeah. just putting myself in the back seat there and thinking how <laughs> that might Well, have. not being in the back seat, well, but being airborne, wondering when you're coming back down or if you're coming back down. Well, that's normally the moment of uh, of panic. You when you hear the, the the momentary silence, you're like, oh here we go, we're barrel rolling. But uh, but he kept it kept on all four runners. Yeah. Has raced here before, once in the Junior Worlds in 2021. But, uh, Pat Norton for Canada, another of our World Championship debutants, has not raced here before. Cyrus Gray making his World Championship debut as well. They won the Battle of the Starts in the first heat among the Canadians. And 528, they win again. Yeah, he's got he's got some he's got a bit of work to do to get himself ahead of Kim. I think he's too far adrift potentially of uh, of Boris Van, but hey, 
Well, there are, there are two or three things going on here. How clean you are compared to what random errors creep in in other people's runs that can absolutely torpedo them. So all you can do is race the mountain as well as you can. Yeah, and, and get down. You know, obviously Taylor unfortunately had his spill and, and now he's out of it. So Pat just needs to be in it to win it here. Yep. Up to Horseshoe. It's out. Good. That little rattle. He steered off there and took the hit in telephone rather than the other hit. Round nameless now into these crucial right-handers. Middle left exits to have left side entry. To keep the speed, the tap. And it's nice, as nice as you want to be really into Martino. There's a third speed. Yeah. And I think he will drop behind Frank Del Duca. Yes, but he stays ahead of Jeff Garbois. So okay. Del Duca picks up two spots. Justin Cripps left. The last Canadian to win a medal on this track. Might be a, a year or two before we see another one. Yeah, and, and you know what, Pat's on a journey here. He was a former brakeman. Uh, he pushes well in the ice house. They test in Calgary in the ice house there. And he, from, uh, from what I understand, Pat hits the same sort of pilot push times that guys like Cripsy and Springer hit. So, you know, the guy can start. He's just got to keep learning how to drive, keep, you know, keep himself on track, keep getting guidance. He's got the best in the business guiding him there, Cripsy and Lyndon Rush. Yeah, no question. No question. Well, funding himself to get through to the World Championships to take up the spot that Canada has and keep it alive. So Pat Norton remains in the race overnight. Now then, what about Kim jin Su and Samuel Park? Park Samuel. Again, for Kim, a former brakeman, this is a World Championship driving debut. And his brakeman who started in skeleton but never started a race as a skeleton slider, has trained in a bobsled but has never started a race before today. So, right. just 21 years of age. Talk about a raw rookie. Yeah, and 5.19 in the first heat, so sub 5.2, which is good. Rough around the first kink. 23, so the start drops back a little bit. Better around kink two. Okay, so he's going to keep this to the outside wall so he gets a nice... Early entrance into this tricky three-pressure wall corner. You mentioned the kit break for Won Young Jung. He has uh, retired from driving, but still very much a driving light in the sport. Yeah. With the Athletes Commission, with the IBSF, and also, of course, with the Koreans. And again, one of the friendliest guys in the circuit. Yeah. I always enjoy seeing one. It's all a bit passive, and he's uh, just the loveliest geezer. Nice lines. Very nice little tap there, going into Devil's Dyke. Third best speed. Some of that may drop away. Second speed here, so yeah, very he's good. finding the right lines. Still see the runner marks on the track where it's polished the ice, the runners. Oh, yep, yeah, he's going to maintain this. And he's going to ease away from Frank Del Duca by 45 hundreds over two heats. Yeah, rightly happy, boys. No, it was a good job. Good job, a little, little bit of a drop in the start. But again, we've got, you know, these are, these are again, developing athletes, developing brakemen, developing pilots. Slower start, but 1600s quicker down the run. And most importantly, down the run, you know, as we mm. just said, in it to win it, so. And that's a sizable gap to Frankie. Yep. Well, don't forget between him and Frank after the first heat were Behanek of the Czech Republic and Pat Norton, both of whom dropped down. So, again, yeah. it's about Improving yourself, because that will help you in your battle against your near rivals. Drives it off nicely into telephone. Gets onto the take on of, uh, there's his brakeman. Stroke, skeleton athlete stroke, who knows what he'll be in next time. Actually, I think with the starts, I don't think the bobsleigh team are going to let go of him. Now then, for Monaco, for a first time as a driver at the top level, Boris Mann. Boris has driven exactly five races in the two-man sled, officially, to qualify for these World Championships. A new brakeman, Antoine Rieu, behind him, making his debut in the World Championships. Yes, yeah, so we've got team shot put here. These guys both super explosive, powerful guys. Boris. Junior shot put record holder for France. I can throw over 16, 17 meters. 5-12. Already a two-time Olympian. And shot seems unlikely for driving, but it's that explosion in the circle that projects the shot across the park. That's what you need. That's the power you need at the start. Well, and you know what? Boris, you know, with shot put, if you're 
the technique for it is a mixture of power and finesse, yeah. which you'd probably argue is the same uh, skill set you need as a pilot. Well, and acceleration and that explosive power as well. So, yeah. so much that, that works well. 5.12 start, and he's still fastest. Ooh, a little late, Albert. Oh, he's yeah. okay. He's okay. And Boris, you said he's had hardly any trips down this, he's yeah. had even less in this sled. This is no, the Beijing sled. Yeah, so. and he's not driven down this track at all in his life. He's had five races on three different tracks as a driver. Yeah, in a That's completely it. different sled. So yeah. we look, this is great. Really nice lines. Good now, job, we'll have Boris. to wait for him to take the helmet off to make sure it's not Bruno Mijon, but that is a really nice drive. 106.35, yeah. that's the, the fastest of the run. Well, there's no, Bruno, Bruno Mijon, yeah. so it's definitely not him. 106.35. And this 106.35 would have left him in 11th place in the first heat. That's a really, really... I cannot overestimate how little driving Boris has done. <laughs> And they improved their start by 200 as well, so Antoine making his money as well. And, you know, Boris was the brakeman for Rudy. You know, Rudy was an amazingly talented pilot, and, you know, injury really scuppered, I think, where his career could potentially have gone. Um, but I hope Rudy stays involved with the Monogas Federation because he's definitely an asset still yeah. in retirement. Well, Boris came in for his headshots a couple of days and said, unfortunately, the boss isn't here this weekend, but he is coming next week. By the boss, he means five-time Olympian Prince Albert. Yeah, that's always cool to see him. So he'll be, I'm sure Albert will be here for opening the Hall of Fame in town in Samaritz and the Walk of Fame. And I'm sure he'll be here as a Boris, <laughs> like a caged tiger as He's ever. A big Adam, boy. Adam Devesh from the Czech Republic now trying to hold on to his advantage. 300 ahead of Van. So 23 get away in the first heat and they record a 21. Good job, boys. So but, proven from Yuck in there. But as he sits down, he's behind. He's got better velocity than Boris. In fact, he, he's got the same fastest time as Frank Del Duca, or the fastest speed as Frank Del Duca there. But losing ground, the fastest part start That's for Monaco. A, a nice exit from Wall, though. So again, mm -hmm. we, we might start seeing, with that velocity from the start, he's going back a little here. Yeah. He stops the bleeding now, and he could come back later on in the run. Yeah, because this is good. Good night. Shot out there, he may stop the bleeding, so yep. he's staying at 19. Number one speed. Oh, there's that tap that everyone's struggling with. But again, here come the big four rights. So, number one speed, let's start seeing this drop down. Mm. Here we go for Gunter Sachs. And then we come through the speed trap into Martineau. Number one speed, is he gonna get him? It's gonna it be might close. Be single digits. It is gonna be close. He should just about be in front. No, Wait. seven back. Seven hundreds. So a 106.45 to the 106.35 of Boris Van. He was 300s up, is 700s back. And again, that is going to be a very tight battle going into tomorrow. Always disappointing not to see the single digit being held up. Uh, held up. It means he knows he's lost at least one place. But again, more sleds in front of him may lose ground. Yeah, but he, you know, he improved the start and he improved the downtime. So there's uh, there's some some promising spots. And then you could see. Through some of the lines, yeah, yeah he's out of Shamrock, so that's the tap he took out of Shamrock, which a lot of them are doing. So that might not end up being the world's worst thing. But he held his speed well down at the bottom. First world champs as a driver from Adam Dobesh. He trails Boris Vaat with Kim Ji Su in third. So fastest 10 sleds or 15 sleds yet to come from our first heat. And we get into the first of our ties in the top 20. Yekos Kalenda and Li Chunjan. The Latvian goes first, having tied the time set by the Chinese sled. So a 14 getaway for the boys, for Big Davis on the back. So a hundredth back the other way. You see the way he got in. It looked like he was getting in really gingerly, but it's because he had been told, been drilled. Do not get in too hard. If you kick this out, you kill our speed. So uh, a good a good load from, from Davis there. Yesterday's birthday boy. Lose a couple of hundreds to Boris Vaat of Monaco at the start. Boris Vaat is the current leader. He's already picked off Adam Debesh of the Czech Republic. Ooh, and high from Kalender there, but he holds it. Well, a little tap for telephone, so this is going to get a bit squirrely through here. That might put pay to him yep. finding speed at the bottom. And again, Debesh was disappointed, but he's only 700s off the lead. I think that we're going to see Kalender drop at least a couple of spots. Yeah, Debesh was just a little bit cleaner down here. This isn't too bad, actually. He sorted this out. 
Needs decent speed. That's probably not enough. He's not going to lead. Will he be in second? And third Boris at the line. On. Yes. Third at the line. LA, so, Boris and Antoine. Yeah. Good job, boys. So they move up another spot. They'll be no worse than 13th overnight. And of course, the next sled down had the same slender advantage over them that the Latvians had. So again, they will need to be super clean. Lee Chun Jan and Ding Song, if they want to hang on ahead. You just saw Edgar's Nemo on the front of the sled there in his coat. Got a terrible burn in Winterberg, hoping to be fit for the four-man here next week. But this young pilot, you know, another one gaining experience and, uh, you know, he's really kind of the uh, the mark the marker here for the young pilots we're seeing in this uh, World Championship so far. He's coming down pretty well. He's inside the top 20. Yeah, big height in Horseshoe. He managed to hang on to it. Again, you can just see those inefficient lines towards the bottom. It's just going to take out the speed he needs to not be behind. Li Chunjian of China with Ding Song behind him. 18th best at the start, 13th at the bottom, tied with Jakob's calendar. And a slender advantage over our current leader, Boris Va, of just eight hundredths of a second. And that can go with an uncomfortable load into turn one. Ooh. A little squirrely out of the grooves. 21, so top five so far, it's not too bad. These guys are training really well at the moment. I was training with them in Winterberg. Observing them at the, at the athletics track under the uh, watchful eye of uh, Yanis Minins, who knows a thing or two about fast starts coming from the Latvian program. And, you know, they're, they're, they're doing okay. It's great having them back on the circuit. A bit tricky out of the wall there. Rocking and rolling through Snake. They were 800s up in the first heat. They were 900s back at the start, and the gap is growing. It's now out to 1800s. He needs a very good bottom part of this track. He's got a kilometre of ice to the finish line. Yes, he needs to be clean as a whistle through all these crucial zones. He, he had first speed, he took that tap out of Shamrock. Is that going to set him back? Well, let's see what he's, he's got. Enough. Still first. Gap's coming back down into single digits. Boris Vat and Antoine Rue watching from the leader's box. Do the There's Chinese the overhaul. It's Red Sled ahead of Maroon Sled. He's got the speed. It's gonna not going to be much. 600s. OK. Well, they came down only 200 slower than uh, Boris Vaar. So six of their 800s remain intact. They will be no worse than 13th place overnight. But he retained good speed, because that was, that was you know, one of the more sizable taps we've seen out of Shamrock, and that seems to scrub speed normally. He's got 89 miles per hour at top speed, so Lee's done something right down the bottom here. So that, that wall corner is so tricky to get out of, those three pressures just not wanting to let you get out clean. Late height in Horseshoe. Watch the runners as he drags it down. And then... Here's the Shamrock tap. Yeah. Whack. It's a long way before you get to Devil's Dyke. There's Boris offering his congratulations to his rivals. Again, you're only racing the mountain here. It's only you that can affect your own time. For Romania then, Mihai Tentea. Top 12 run in the first heat. One of our more experienced drivers, Mihai, in his fifth World Championships in a two-man. Best result, 10th place in Altenburg 2020. The 21 in their first heat, a 19. Good job, boys. So Chipriano earning his money there, getting himself under 5.2. And Mihai has got around those first two kinks beautifully. So we might be seeing, if we see a clean run here, we might be seeing him launch ahead of the Chinese athlete. Yeah. He could well be Beautifully knocking on the door of the top ten overnight, Mihai Tentia. Nicely around Sunny. This is one of the best tops of track we've seen all day. This is yep. great. He's gaining nothing in terms of speed. They just have a little bit too much control in the runners. Uncertain what today's ice was going to bring. Still 800s up. Better speed than a Chinese sled and a similar tap. Here we go. Tree, round bridge. 75 miles an hour at this stage and still accelerating hard. Off Gunter Sachs got spat out there beautifully. Look at that number one speed. 89.6 miles an hour. 
And across the line, that'll be a decent advantage. He pulls out 2,400s over his rivals. There we go, 89.6 miles per hour, almost clocking 90 miles an hour. Now, his That's first heat hard. advantage was one hundredth of a second. He's now a quarter of a second in front of Lee Chun Jan. No wonder Chiprin De Rossi is happy with that. Yeah, and he would well, have had a look at that start time up on the screen behind uh, behind the camera there as well. But I said, you know, even from my uh, caveman eyeballs, I, I could see the top of that track was one of the nicest and cleanest we've seen today. Little tap as he came out of uh, Nash and Dixon before Horseshoe, and he took that shamrock tap as well. And at the top, you don't really accelerate. What you do is stop giving away exactly. the speed. It's exactly. below Horseshoe that you really build the acceleration. Yeah, good job, guys. <laughs> yeah, big Chiprian and his driver, Mihai Tentea. They lead with 11 faster sleds yet to come. So they were 600, uh, 800s, 1200s, can't count, behind Marcus Trichel. Let's see what Marcus and Marcus Sammer, his brakeman, can produce. The big B, Sammer, the weightlifter, Mr. Turbo, 513 in the first heat. Oh, slipped on the load there. And a heavy tap into kink one, but he gets it under control. 14, so they only drop 100. Best velocity so far. Well, round two, he's having to rearrange himself a little there to get himself early on to wall. Now everyone's trying to work out the best line around here, the best way to flatten off those three curves. Yeah, limiting the damage, I think, is as good as we're going to get. Yeah. And especially in a format, which is longer and heavier, he wags the tail more aggressively, building his advantage over Mihai Tentea. Yep, he's keeping this nice and clean. Nice and See how he comes out of Shamrock. Does he take the tap? He does, but yep. it's not too bad. Ooh, not knocked him into a bit of a skid. Will that take off number one speed? Mm, Down yeah. to third. 2600s up, 1400s from the first heat. He's nearly doubled that, but a gap is coming down. Yeah, and this guy knows how to drive, so he knows exactly what he needs to do here to mitigate against that tap and skid. Should still have a quarter of a second in hand over Tentea. He's done it, two temps, good job. So 106.08 downtime compared to 106.14 for Tentea. And as we get through our faster sleds from the first heat, the speeds and the times continue to reflect their first round position. So Marcus hanging on to no worse than 11th overnight. Mihai Tentea will be no worse than 12th. You can just see that slip there from Sama as he's trying to load. At that stage, you know, it's arguable how much that would have affected velocity, but again, not ideal. Sled still in the drive lines, luckily, so didn't yeah. skid in a big way. There's the big skid. He get that sort of tap-tap into Devil's Dyke. That put him into a skid. But it is Marcus Trichel who leads with our fastest 10 sleds from the first heat still to come. And then the remainder of the field. Inside the top 10 after the first of four runs in the men's two-man world championships, Timo Rona of Switzerland with Luca Rolli. His father was a very successful bobsledder for Switzerland and today seems to be backing up the promise that Timo Rona showed in Altenburg last week that he is actually worthy of a top 10 spot and a 5.14 getaway, that's a pretty impressive start as well. Yeah, they improved by 200s and I was impressed with the first push, the 5.16. You know, Timo's not one of the stronger pushing pilots and uh, Luca has his work cut out. But Luca's really wrenching that sled around um, and I stayed in the grooves but it just... Uh, not great for velocity. Now, but... If it's going sideways, it's not going forward. You don't need to be much of a mathematician to work that out. 800s over Trichel, down to six. Marcus Trichel had trouble out of Horseshoe. He got safely through Telephone and Shamrock, but then had a big skid off Devil's Dyke. And that's cleaner from Rona, yeah. but he doesn't have so much speed. And that's interesting. I wonder if that's from velocity at the top, but it's gone now down he to does. third now. Now he does. Clean and smooth here, and that will put him further ahead of Marcus Trichel and cement him into a top 10 spot overnight. Back down to sixth fast. That's yeah. interesting because it's skidding looks... over the crest to run, but still three tenths up. The first sub six. We have a 105.87. Okay, and you know what? For Luca, equal to Marcus Sammer two man push. Both pushing 5.14. So that's that's... A... Excellent. 41 hundreds quicker than his first heat and a 105.87 in the first run would have left him just ahead of Christoph Harper who is fifth. 
But that's, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing, you know, Timo was the first lead off. See, this is what I'm talking about. See how much he's wrenching it around. Yeah. So that's yeah, if you're ideal. lifting the sled up and you're lifting it sideways, you're definitely not pushing it forward as much as you could be. Yeah, Lucas certainly had his, uh, his caffeine today. But, you know, Timo was the first set off. As we said, you know, that's the, the slowest ice on the day. So that could be potentially where, you know, his, yeah. his gains really came here. Well, and he's got one run today in these conditions under his belt, so he'll have been better dialed in. Timo Rona leads. Next up is the second of three Swiss sleds in the top ten. It's like rolling back the clock 20 years. Seaman Friedli and Andreas Haas. Yes, yeah, so Seaman again. He had a uh, nasty... Oh, he's limping there. That calf injury obviously causing him problems. That might affect the start here. 31, yeah, they've gone, uh, they've gone From way... 17 to a 31, yeah. and that will be screaming in agony all the way down the track as well for Seaman Friedley. Yeah, I think either that was managed and that was just what he had to do to get down here, or that something's happened in the start there, so hopefully he's OK. Um, yeah, there's not going to be much a Haz could do about that. But we'll see some... Uh, Oh, tapping and tapping. And again, if the guy, if something has gone wrong in the start there, yeah. he's in pain. If he's pulled a muscle, then... This is going to be yeah, the longest drive. This is drive about survival, drive. isn't it? Yeah. Because you can't be calm and focus on the drive. You have to focus on the drive, the speeds you're doing here, but he, he can't be finessing. He's just... He's found second speed here. Yeah. A good exit, carrying down to third speed. But, yeah, I... No, yeah, I just Can drop back okay. behind his teammate, Timo Rona. And in fact, he drops a fraction behind Marcus Treichel as well. So Timo Rona moves up, will be no worse than ninth overnight. But you know, he's, he's, his time's dropped by, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.4. It's, it's uh, Friedley that size. He's going to get out very gingerly. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Simon. Someone get his sled. Yeah, there we go. They're in. Yeah, well. He's going to need physio and stat. And more tape. Yeah. If he's going to continue, just tape. Right, here that. he is, sprinting. And, Greg, that's the moment there right is, there. Yeah. You saw, oh, then, and now suddenly he's lame. Yeah. And Chris Woolley in the background, he's watching that, and he knows no, exactly what's happened. He's still loaded off it like it's... You know, this is a tough guy. Hey, listen, you can't be an old softy like me and compete in bobsleigh. You've got to be absolutely rock hard to do this day in, day out, week in, week out. If there's any way he can go again tomorrow, he absolutely will. But Seaman Friedley for Switzerland that might not walk off. And that's hard to tell. It's a home champs, you know. It's mm. Well, really that's why he's play, pushed he's his done, body to make it work yeah, for him. Done everything he can. Okay, so Switzerland's Marcel Rona leads, tied in eighth place with Seaman Friedley is Emma Tsipoulis of Latvia with Mats Miknes behind him, one of their best brake men of the last four or five years. Yeah, 5.09, look at that. But rattles it off the walls. Gets around King 2, OK. Now that's more we, we'd expect to see, you know, a Latvian pilot with Mats Miknes on the back of the sled, a 13 to an 09. Excellent pushing, Mats. Tied with Seaman Friedley, and he was... 600s ahead of Timo Rona. Yeah, now you think if Emils can keep this clean and take the right lines into Horseshoe and out of Horseshoe, you'd expect him to build. He wasn't advantage. clean in Nash and Dixon. Pretty decent out of Horseshoe. Out of telephone, gets a square tap going into Devil's Dyke. And the speed is still there. Here we go. So the big four rights. Yeah, middle left exit. Takes that entry nice and early. So he's going to be three tenths and more ahead. He's Brewer. challenging for a top six run. Emil Sipoulis, 105.65. And That's a great job. the fastest run in the first heat was a 105.62. The track is still gaining speed. Yeah, it's getting way faster. Look at his, I mean, a 106.22 to a 105.65. Yep. Huge improvement. Well, it was a big improvement. It was much cleaner at the start, so he didn't scrub off that start speed, and he kept it clean through the forest as well. Emil Tsipoulis heading for the top six, maybe. Yeah, but we're still looking at Tentea as the top speed so far. So he's good. Long skid, Martino to Portago, and again, throwing the sled sideways at 85 miles an hour is not going to help it accelerate. 
Well, you heard the track announcer just mention the 100th of a second advantage that Patrick Baumgartner and Eric Fantatini of Italy have over Emmett Sipoulis and Mats Mignus of Latvia, our current leaders. In any other racetrack, in any track at all, a hundredth of a second is a dead heat here, even more so. So they need to drop this in tandem with the Latvians. They won't hit an 09, but they need to get it in the low 20s here. Give Patrick something to work with. Eric's a great athlete. It's a 27, so it's gone the other way. So Patrick is going to need the drive of his life to keep on top of that hundredth advantage he yeah. had before Starting the run. Starting 1,800 slower than the Latvians when you only have a hundredth in hand is not great, but he outdrove Sapoulis off a slower start in the first heat as well. Down the wall, out of snake, one and two, into Sunny. He's stemming the bleed, but is it stopping from 32 to 33? It's really it be clean be here. Clean. Crucial out of horseshoe now. This sled was quick at the bottom of the track. So now okay. he stopped the bleed. Yeah, but he's a third of a second back. Best speed, tiny tap there. Needs to be super clean here. He had a really good drive in the first heat. He's still got better speed. He's closing. No, he's not. No, I don't think he's going to have enough, but he's... I just think it's number one speed, but yeah. when you've got... Sipoulis is hanging on there, isn't he? Too much lost at the start. Yeah, and well. four tenths back, 106.07. It is better than his first heat by 1400s, but it's not as big an improvement as we've seen from some of the sleds around him. So Baumgartner drops behind Sapulis and Rona. Yeah, but I mean, Mathis gave um, Emil's a huge, huge start, 509. You know, it's that sort of velocity. It's just going to, you know, if you're, if you're signing back at 5.27, it's always going to be an uphill struggle to to overturn that. Yeah. Little tap there off wall. Many have escaped that. Again, watch him looking for the line. The runners following the eyes as he brings it down off horseshoe into telephone. Lines were good, but like his coach Simone Batazzo, the start speed is the hindrance. Wasn't much of a hindrance for these boys, Roman Heinrich and Doran Oteville, a 5.19 getaway. And they ended up with a great drive into sixth position. Yeah, I think 519 getaway was a, a great return for these guys. Well, now, they're retirement champs. Yeah, they just need three more of those drives, and this will be a really great way to draw a line under a career for. Yeah, that looked a pretty good hit to me. They've got away well here. They didn't get down, keep it under control, a little hard into the king. They've maintained the 19, so I think they're keeping themselves in the game. It's ninth best speed. But Roman is, a, is an excellent pilot. Yep. He understands driving, he understands tracks, he understands this track. 2100s ahead of Emil Tsipoulis from the first heat. They were outstarted by a tenth, so that has turned into red numbers, but he had a really good first run. He needs another one. Yeah, it's going back a little bit. But as you said before, this top part of the track, they're just looking to stop the flow, stop the bleed. And he was and absolutely horseshoe, yourself. flying in the forest, wasn't he? Brings it down nicely off Horseshoe. There's the top speed. Little nudge in Devil's Dyke, but not a hit. No, that's not too bad. I think he'll carry that through. 800 for number one speed, so keep your eye on this. We might be seeing green numbers by Martineau. Hands of a surgeon. Real precision needed now. He's coming from behind. He's got the best speed of all. It's going to be close. Top six overnight for France or Latvia is Latvia. Just doesn't quite get there. Hey, but still, you know, two in Europa Cup most of this year. Two really good runs from Roman Heinrich. I don't know the last time he was on this track, actually. Might be a couple of years ago. Well, his world championship best ever, an eighth place finish in two man in Altenburg 2021. Uh, good pushing from Dorian, you know, two, a pair of 519s. It's a really good job, but again, it just shows the quality of Mignus. You know, if you can drop a start down to a, a 5 0, if you can take that much off for your pilot, you're going to put them in the best position to come down in the lead. In the top five, with Emma Sipoulis leading the second heat. Fifth place after one run of four in the two-man bobsleigh world championships is Germany's Christoph Harfer with Matthias Sommer behind him. 
Well, let's see if Harper can put the cat among the pigeons and aim himself towards the medals. The 30-year-old in only his second two-man world championship start. He's really letting that pilot handle stand up. Oh, he's here to pop him. He doesn't want to move. He does not want to put the sled into a skid. You'll lose less from that drilled bar being up than you will from skidding. And he's got 1,300s in the bank here, so again, a deficient starting crew, but they've taken that 200s down. That's thanks to Sommer. He's got an absolute beast on the back there, but we're seeing one of the best drivers in the field. Negotiating this top part of the track. He was really nice. 3,400s ahead of Sapulis at the start, or after the first heat. And the gap now is down to only 1,600, but he is bringing it back. Better speed than we saw from the Latvians or from Roman Heinrich. Yep. Two tenths now. Well, this is him. The speed zone really well. Shooting for a medal position overnight. 145.4, miles an hour. Same as Heinrich, and across the line, 57. OK, the track is getting faster as the day progresses again. So off a 5.20 start, okay, the shows what previous track done. record was off a 5.09 start. So a 105.57, the fastest trip down today, but we still have the fastest four drivers from the first heat to come. Yeah, and like you say, he's in, down, these guys low brilliantly. They're the Olympic bronze medalists. They're well drilled. They know exactly what they're doing. And like you say, he leaves that pilot bar out because he's going to do you less damage. He knows he's taking a tap there as well. He's let himself get set. He's obviously got his hands on the D-rings. All right, now I can let it down. Yep. There we go. Don't breathe, don't move. He takes the lead with the fastest four sleds to go. Matthias Sommer is Brakeman. There's Christoph Harfer. The Brakeman competed in the four-man in the Worlds with Hansi Lochner a few years ago. Next up, Brad Hall with Taylor Lawrence behind him. Second fastest start, 5.05. Came down two tenths off the lead. 600s only ahead of Christoph Harfer and another 5.05. So that adds 1,500s to the start and the best velocity. So... Taylor, 505, and another. He'll appreciate, he'll know exactly what I'm referencing there. And Brad has been driving so well recently. He's another one, like Heinrich, understands the drive. He understands what, how the sled reacts, how the track wants you to, what the track wants you to do, and how to get the best out of it. So Got nicely out of wall, but a yeah. little rocking and rolling in Snake. Down into Nash and Dixon, a tap into Dixon, down to Horseshoe. The gap is still growing over Christoph Harfer of Germany. He's nailed that line out of Horsey through telephone. Too much Not out of as Shamrock. well as Harfer, though. Speed is down, only fifth fastest. He's half a kilometre an hour down, which sounds like almost nothing. But when you're talking of hundreds of a second, it makes a difference. He's down from 38 ahead to 28 Third ahead. Speed. Third best speed, Harfer was fastest. He will still be ahead at the line by oh, 600 record. times Good the job, track Bradley. record. So okay. keeps the dream alive. Ties Harfer to the 100. Bavarian flags, Union flags, all sorts of flags waving in the grandstands. Brad Hall yeah, loves seeing that. has the lead with the fastest three sleds to go in our second heat. These guys, they've just been brilliant this year in the two, man. You know, it's been booming starts. Brad's driving well. And, you know, it's not... Sometimes it's not rocket science to get the results here. You know, you drive well. If your equipment runs well and you've got a great start, you should be in the mix all the time. And these guys have been all year. Well, you and he have had some big results in two-man and four-man over the last quad. And that continues now. Yeah, it's been a journey for sure. It really Good has. Job, after that big hand injury in Whistler, he has come right back to even better than before. Now, Francesco Friedrich is a man who's had an injury, an adductor tear, when he was training between Christmas and New Year. And he has been rehabilitating that with the sole view of winning an eighth straight World Championship Seaman Gold. So Can he one star put here. himself in the lead? 5.06 with Alex Schuller. Again, just behind, but Francesco, I think, is coming back to form. But a lot of that second kink. 300s up. He's only holding his advantage over Brad Hall and Christoph Harfer. And a skid down there again into Snake. Yeah, this isn't 
vintage Friedrich we're seeing here at the top, but you cannot write him off. Well, but it is, but the track is so difficult that even a man who's won a world championship here back in 2012, 2013, runner, can have those mistakes creeping in as well. Here we go, watch this now, watch this speed come back. Third best speed, only added one hundredth in nearly a kilometre of ice. There's the number one, here he goes. Six hundredths up. He's got great material, the guy knows how to win. He vanishes Look from sight this. down the straight, he knows exactly where he's going, he's barely visible in the sled. And a 105.45 track record, that's twelve hundredths quicker than anybody has gone so far. You know, you, you just can never, ever count this guy out. You know, when you've been winning for so long, winning truly is a habit. And you know, no matter where you end up... Look at the blue and the stars and the gold on his helmet. That's his Michael Schumacher tribute. He's such a huge Schumacher fan. He's always been his sporting hero, and he is emulating him in a very different kind of racing to that that the Formula One great enjoyed. But Schumacher would appreciate that. He loved coming here and coming down the track in a bobsled. But you know what? And he's got a Ferrari on the back as well. He's got Alex Schuller pushing Look, him he's here. He's gone. He's, <laughs> he's, he knows. I've got, got the line out of sight. Because we saw a hundredth deciding medals in both skeleton races. He knows that yeah, that hundredth could win him a gold medal. OK, fastest two to go. And just in, if you want to be in the lead, you have to break the track record, essentially. Yeah, and well, we're we going to see the start record here. They had 5.03 in the first heat, the number one start. Will they improve it? Will they sustain it? Johannes Lochner and Georg Fleischhauer, the winningest team in two-man so far this season, and Fleischhauer has never not had gold behind Lochner. And watch Fleischhauer load. I mean, I noticed that in some of his earlier oh, too. There we go. And, you know, I watched this in his earlier races. He loads in a two-man beautifully. He's he, in, down for a guy. The guy's enormous. He's like six foot six. Uh, and wide. And he yeah. gets in like there's a trap door that he's just falling through. Yeah. I mean, no. that is absolutely astonishing. Which is why we're seeing such good velocity. Because Hansi is a great athlete in, in his own right. Yep. Ha uh, you know, Hansi seems like the pound prince of bobsleigh at times. But I think he's a... Uh, he does it deliberately. Look at this, 210. Look at the advantage yeah, over gonna, Francesco Friedrich. He's laying down the gauntlet for Mickey here. They're going to have to come up with something really good. In this he was run. 900 up on France from the first heat. That's out to 2600. Oh, he's that I'm going to hold judgment on that speed. He's getting his eighth speed, but he's Three getting tenths. faster. He's getting faster. We're in the trees. Don't necessarily believe everything you read. This is a flying run from Frank, uh, from Hansi Lochner. Is yeah, he going to go quicker than right. Friedrich? Yo, yeah, he does! Took that, <laughs> the speed line out of Portaga. And some of the guys were saying this week, Brad said, you know, the fast line is the one where you're almost crashing. So yep. Hansi's absolutely taken that literally. 3,500 quicker than Brad Hall and Christoph Harfer in this run alone, and 2,300 quicker than Francesco Friedrich in this run alone. Outstanding. And okay, they took the Mickey Boat, come and get it. Yep. Mickey's going to have to come and earn this one. Look at all the Lochner flags and the Bavarian flags there. He is absolutely the best Hansi Lochner we've ever seen. Well, and it's meant to be his last year. He keeps talking about retirement and... Uh, we keep talking about through this season, will he? After such an astonishing two-man year. If you are thinking about it and you are looking towards the World Championships here in San Moritz, it's a fantastic place to race. But if you're going to finish your career, a fantastic place to do that. I don't expect for a moment that Mickey Vogt is remotely thinking about that. But he and Sandro Mikkel, 700s up from the first heat. Sandro have to give Mickey every hundredth here. 509 in the first. Look at his legs. Oh, go. Beautifully in and down. 511. The other way. So this is going to take everything from Mickey's talent, Mickey's skill set. He had 700s. He's lost it all at the start. And third best velocity. Let's ignore the speeds for a moment. Let's just look at the lines. Through wall. Does he come off straight? Tiny tap down into Snake. It's OK, he had held the 1100 deficit. Let's see what the next clock has got down to 14. Nice transition into Sunny. Until you get to Horseshoe, that slower start plays out all the way down. Little tap exiting Dixon. Here we go. You can hear hoy, hoy, hoy in the Horseshoe bar. He's got the best speed. Yep, little tap, but he didn't have the skid. Now, this is going to be exactly close. what to do here. 
intense. He's got to it's find the speed here. not going to catch Lochner. The question is, how big is Lochner's overnight lead going to be? Mickey drops his head as well. Second best speed. How is he close be dead can he run him? 3,900 back. He's behind Lochner and Friedrich. Hansi leads overnight. Mickey yeah. Oates drops to third. That is a big second run from Johannes Lochner. That's absolutely enormous. And what a response. You know, he's from both of them. Yep. Arshauer and Hansi, they really dropped it. But you know what, Mickey? He's not far from silver. Hey, game on. Two more runs. That's two more miles of ice, and there's only a third of one second between the top three sleds. Yeah, and Brad is not far out of that either. He will fancy yep. that. This is going to be a fantastic race. Hey, play. it's the two-man world championships with Friedrich and Lochner and Vogt and Hall at their very best. You can put everybody else into the mix, but those were the four front-running favourites, and they are all in the top four. Half is not out of it. And look at the battle. Sipoulis, Heinrich, Rona, Baumgartner. There's some really standout performances there. Seaman Friedley, will he go tomorrow? Only the physio and time will tell. Boris Van, his sixth bobsleigh race. He's in the World Championships as a driver and his first time on this track in 14th place. Can't say enough about that. Well, there's Hansi's mum and dad and the rest of the Lochner Barmy Army, the Bavarian flags waving. Our final three sleds in the competition are from Austria Liechtenstein in Romania. First up, rookie Jakob Mandelbauer with Diane Nichols Bardi behind him. Yeah, so some new athletes here for the Austrians. And you know, spots to take with. Uh, oh, and again, there's that inexperience. So early with Hafler knew exactly what to do. Yeah, and that's been drilled into you by coming here a couple of times and then looking at the video and the coach is going, leave the bar <laughs> yeah. out. No, absolutely. But you know what? Benny Meyer, he's, he's out now. He's retired. He's one of their best pilots, learning to be a doctor now. Yep. Out in, uh, in Austria. And there's, there's, there's room here. There's room for someone to come through for a new rookie. So what a great experience for the young kid to come and uh, lay down uh, his first the perfect place to do it. Somewhere completely different. No yeah. pressure on him. No expectation. Big hygiene horseshoes. Oh, come on. Oh, look out. <laughs> He's got it back under control. Kind of. <laughs> but here, here 75 out. miles an hour. You've got to be thinking ahead of where the sled is. Yeah. You can't be reacting to the sled. And that was the danger off Horseshoe. Oh, big skid. So he had, away a bit of speed. He had issues with Portago in training, but he seemed to be doing OK today. He's done all yeah. right. So 107.23 for him. Only 400s different from his first heat, but I guarantee if you overlay the video, not one inch of the track will have the runners in the same place. And that's the uh, that's the significance of being young and relatively inexperienced in driving anywhere, and especially here in Samaras. Look at the exit of Horseshoe. He gets very high, very, very late. High. Watch the runner tips, hauling it off. Yeah. That was a big oh my God, steer. Get down. Yeah, hit, take the tap before yeah. telephone. But hey, you know take what? Take the tap instead of crashing, always. Yeah, when they had, and the push from 29 to 22. Yeah. That's good. Good job from the brakeman. Good push from the pilot. And they got away <laughs> with it. <laughs> and smiles all around. He knows. Brakeman thinks he knows. He has no idea how close he was. <laughs> no, he's got no clue. He'll, he'll enjoy the video later. From Liechtenstein, Martin Krantz and Lawrence Lenhair. Again, two young athletes in their first uh, worlds. Martin Kranz just 20. Lawrence Lenhair is 24 years old. Yeah, a 5.45 getaway in the first heat. So I just want to look, bring that down. These guys are brand new to this game. Well, 20 years old, the driver still not fully physically developed and has be they barely started training for bobsled. They have started racing bobsled. It's a, a little bit of a heavy tap out of kink, but kink two, not too bad. Brings it over to get nice and early into wall. And again, these guys, like we said earlier, they are looking to just improve upon previous runs, minimize mistakes, and just keep taking little steps further forward. One of the Sam Moritz driving legends, Donald Holstein, who I'm sure we will see in the historic race next week, is helping them. And if you want knowledge of this track, ask Donald Holstein. He must have been down here a gazillion times, driving taxi bobs and all sorts of other racing sleds since retiring from competition. So, Martin Krantz, 
Again, first, he's done one World Cup start, first major international race for him. And what a place to do it. And he's finding some speed here. He's got, you know, he's from 27th star. He's got 16th best speed. Looking to overhaul Axel Brown of Trinidad and Tobago. Does he get close? Oh, he does. Picks up two. Wow, good job, Martin. Ahead of Axel Brown and Mandelbauer as well. There's Donald on the left. If you come to Sam Ritz and Donald Holstein isn't here, you're in the wrong town, I think. Hmm. So, Martin Krantz picks off two. Picks off Jakob Mandelbauer and picks off... Trinidad and Tobago's Axel Brown. There you go. That's the yeah. way to end your day. Oh, good job, Martin. So like we said, you know, minimizing mistakes, getting better every run. And those are little victories, these guys. You'll be over the moon with that. It's brilliant. That, those are the sort of things, those little victories, which keep you on track, keep you going. And you'll look back on this when he's, you know, properly developed <laughs> and <Tomorrow>. with stronger <laughs> starts and go, well, you know what? I'm, look where I was, look where I am now. Six runs brilliant. in training. He's got two more runs, so he's added a third more knowledge of this track than he ever had before. And Andre Nika and his teammate, Mihai Kalantia, behind, it'll be the same for them. Their fourth trip down the track, or their eighth trip down the track, I beg your pardon. Yeah, at a 5.45, they were equal with the Liechtenstein athletes in the first heat. And uh, Lorenz and Martin recorded a 47, dropped two hundredths the wrong way. Wow. Can Nika and Kalansia go the right way? Jakob, the driver here, in only his 12th recorded two-man bobsleigh start. Yeah, and you can see that with the load. 5.44, they do it. Hundreds better than the first team. Good job, guys. And three hundreds ahead of their rivals from Liechtenstein. Every time you're on track, you're not only racing yourself down the track, there are others you're comparing yourself against, and they'll be doing exactly the same. Yeah, and what's, it's really cool being able to, to watch and commentate on these guys. These are young guys coming to their first um, Bobsleigh World Championships, you know. And who knows where they're going to be in a few years, and we're, you know, watching their journey here. And I, as an athlete, I know how special a journey in Bobsleigh is, you know. You never know where you're going to end up or what you're yep. going to do, and um, we're seeing the start of theirs. It's really exciting. Oh, Big tap out there. telephone. Yeah, yeah but it's again, exciting. haul it down. It's rattling through the forest. Just keeping his brakeman awake there. Let him know he's still boxing, mate. And now the corners are longer and more flowing and faster, and they're just a little easier. You don't have to wrestle the sled quite so much. I see. Coming into Martin, I remember old Bruce Tasker used to tell me he felt like a fighter pilot coming up here. Yeah. You know, you're approaching 90 miles an hour, and you're just launching around these big left-handers. Across the line, he will come with a 107.62. And so he completes his first day as a world championship bobsledder. Yeah, good on him. And what a and place to Martin do it. Krantz. He's I mean, jumped up there. Yeah, Martin Krantz jumps up three spots to 24th. But Andre Nika and Mihai Kalansea bring the day to a conclusion. The sun is fast heading down towards the mountain peaks. It'll soon start to get very bitter again here in Samaritz. Hey, look how low he is. You know, that's that's yeah. a, that's confident. That's Absolutely. a really confident kid there. Takes the tap for telephone though. I've had a few of those. So, congrats, guys. Well done. Yeah, and they made it down, and others with more experience did not. At the front of the field, though, a change around in our lead order. He came into this heat just 700s off the lead. Hansi Lochner, we go. Fleischhauer behind him now has a 32 hundredths of a second advantage. And not over the man who led the first heat, over Francesco Friedrich, the defending world champion. Mickey Vogt is 39 hundredths back. And 9 hundredths behind him is Brad Hall. Christoph Harfer is 6 hundredths behind him. And Emin Supoulis is hovering around inside the top six, narrowly ahead of Roman Heinrich, Timo Rona. Patrick Baumgartner, ninth place on a very much better first day in the world than we've seen from him before. And Marcus Treichel in the top 10 as well. Experience really paying. Seaman Friedley returning to the sled for the two man buck, hobbling away. Head of Mihai Tentia, Lee Chun Jan, Boris Van in his first senior race, his sixth drive of a bobsled in. 14th place ahead of Adam Dobesh. All sorts of mixes of experience and talent throughout our field. 
And unfortunately for Taylor Austin and Shaq Murray Lons, their crash means they will not be part of the action tomorrow. So our field is down to 27, and all of them will go in heat three. We will then cut it to the fastest 20 sleds to decide the 2023 two man world championship medals. Hansi Lochner, the overnight leader. Will it be him who stops Francesco Friedrich's seven strong string of golds and prevents him getting an eighth? Join Greg Cackett, me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew tomorrow afternoon at 1.15 CET to find out.